watched my last video on my new Rocky Mountain Instinct that I'm building that I'm transitioning to a Rocky Mountain altitude. If not, maybe go check that one out. Uh, there's some funny memes at the very least in there, so check that out. But today I thought I would talk about my son, son's bike. He has a Rocky Mountain Edge 14. His first Edge was the 12 and love that. That bike got a ton of use. It's been great. He still loves it because it's so small. He rides around the house. Uh, but we have also the Rocky Mountain Edge 14 and we're looking at getting him a 16 inch bike soon and so I'm doing some research on that and I thought I would share kind of what I've been finding so let's check this bike out and I'll tell you what we liked about it what we didn't like about it and then kind of some comparisons between some of the other bikes so let's get at it all right so let's break down this bike just really quick so we have the V crown gem tires on it they're 14 by two and a quarter and then you have the V brakes on it so Obviously, as you pull the lever, it's going to go along the rim there. And then up to the Tektra brakes here, you have front and back. They're nicely sized for little kids' hands. My son has no issue pulling them. Awesome there. With the grips, again, nice little grips, easy for kids' hands to grab. Um, and these are great too, just because his hands don't slip off. So components are fantastic for making sure that it fits for little humans. Frame is an alloy frame, sitting in at about 14 and a half pounds. You got just kind of like your cheap little pedals. I might upgrade those eventually, but for now, at least he's not giving himself shinners. Your cranks, three-piece cranks. Nice thing about these two is it's really, une really easy to unthread these. And for a while, he used this as a strider bike. So we just unthreaded these, moved the cranks back to kind of like this position and then ran a zip tie through the crank hole and then just zip tied it there and then he was able to use it as a run bike. So that was really good too. But nice color, drop boats that were super easy to use and it held, so that was fantastic. All right, so getting into the drive side here, you have a 28 tooth chain ring. I like this little double guard system going on here. You don't have to have like the whole plastic all the way back that I think looks goofy, but this has worked really well at keeping his pants out of the chain ring or getting all tangled up in his chain. So uh, I thought this worked really well. Doesn't It looks better too, so that's been fantastic. And then going back, you have a, fit, or sorry, a 16 tooth cog back here on a free wheel. So that's been again, really awesome. He hasn't had any issues getting this thing going. Seems like it's geared Quite well for everything and then obviously you have the integrated seat post so again just kind of like all one piece and then your quick release there so overall a really great bike it seems like it's fit really well for a little kid and it's built to a really high standard and I'm really happy with it all right so we have had this bike now for about a year it hasn't got as much use as I would hope um, just because with when he started kind of being in the right size for it and wanting to ride it versus his 12 inch Rocky Mountain Edge. It then kind of got cold. We have really long cold winters here. So there's like four months at least where we're not doing any riding. So he's used it a bit at the bike park, but hasn't got as much use as I would like out of it. But some of the pros kind of to this bike and why we purchased it and after using it for a year, what we've liked about it the biggest draw for me buying this bike was the no coaster brakes. So for anyone who doesn't know, a coaster brake is where when you back pedal, it hits a point and that's your brake. Basically it like stops the hub. Um, I hate those and I didn't, that was kind of like my minimum of what I didn't want. We had looked at a Norco, I believe they're called the Storm in a 14 and it had the coaster brakes on it. So it's honestly why we didn't go with that bike because it would have been easier for us to find. But um, I didn't want it for two reasons. One, I've noticed just with him practicing, we like prop up the back tire in the house and then he can practice his pedaling. Often what happens is, especially when he's first learning, he would get kind of like up to the top and his foot would slip a bit and he wouldn't get that like full elliptical motion or like that full circular motion. He'd get to a point and then almost like ratchet backwards and then his feet would plant and then he would like go again. Um, and so if, if he did have a coaster brake on that, basically he's going to be like ratcheting the brakes as his feet slip, which like once you start pedaling, is just going to probably cause him to crash because he's going to be like hitting the brakes by accident. 
I mean, as a kid, I remember having coaster brakes, and of course they're a shit ton of fun because you can just like lock them up and skid, but maybe not the best for learning how to mountain bike properly. The other thing is, kids learn and adapt so easily. He rides shotgun with us. Shout out to Shotgun for making a rad product. So he's seen me using my brakes up here already. He understands how they work. He'll even pull them sometimes. So to just bring him to this type of a break right off the bat just seemed easier rather than trying to transition him from a coaster brake then to like your bar brakes and so on. So I just, that was kind of like my one thing that I had to have. And like I said, the Norco still had coaster brakes, so we didn't go with it. Uh, he had a Rocky Mountain Edge 12 that was fantastic. He loved it. We're big Rocky fans here, so obviously it was a natural progression. But had they had coaster brakes on it, I wouldn't have bought it. So that was the biggest one for me. The other big one that I didn't know I needed until we had it was the quick release on the seat. Um, you don't really think about it because usually like when I'm mountain biking, I have a tool, but we noticed it with his Stasic bike. It has um, just an Allen key adjustment. And there's so many times where we've like moved the seat for him or we've adjusted it for a different kid to, kid to ride and then forgot about it and then go to ride and the seat's like way too high or slam. And then you have to go get an Allen key or you have to, you're on the trail and you don't have one. Um, whereas with the quick release, you just open it up, slide the seat wherever you need it, close it back down and, and you're good to go. Uh, again, it was something I never really thought of buying the bike. It's not as if I was like, oh sweet, there's a quick release on there. But it's one of those things now that I've had it, if I was buying the bike and there was two bikes that I was equally looking at and one had a quick release, it would probably be a deciding factor for us. So really like that because we're often adjusting the seat as he grows or as the terrain changes, bringing the seat down for comfort. So that was kind of another thing that I really enjoyed. The bike is also a really like a pretty respectable weight. It's like 14 and a half pounds. So it's not super heavy. But it is a really strong bike. Like we pack this in the van all the time. We take it everywhere. He's dropped it a few times. It gets some abuse and there's like no marks or anything on it. It still looks like it's in per perfect condition. So um, really solid built bike. Uh, the components on it, obviously like the V tires, the Tetro brakes, um, the quick release, like they've just, they've made it to be a quality bike and it shows and he's loved it because I think because of that, like, it's just made everything easier and it's well made. So we're a big fan of this bike. I, I really think it would be another one that we would consider buying again. And there hasn't really been a lot that I've had to complain about it. So um, good job, Rocky, for making a rad mountain bike for kids. Um, I, I'm, I'm super stoked on him riding with us. So it's nice to know that I can get him on a bike that's going to be a good quality bike. All right, so now let's go into just a couple things that are kind of nitpicky things or personal preference things as to what I didn't love about this bike. There isn't a lot, so it's not going to be really extensive. Like I said, overall, we really like this bike. I would definitely buy another Rocky for him. Um, I think that it's been a really good bike, but just a couple things that were just nitpicky for me specifically. So the first one that I didn't really love is the seat. It's an integrated seat, so it it can't really be like adjusted. It's not railed, so you can't adjust it forwards and backwards like you can a railed seat. And again, that might just be something specifically for us, but having a really tall two-year-old, like 95th percentile tall, I just found like his knees are always encroaching on the handlebars. Um, and just being able to have that little bit of adjustability to bring the seat back to make that cockpit just a bit bigger for him, but it just made it easier and potentially made the bike last a little bit longer. But as it is, we're going to have to upgrade this right away because you kind of have to find that fine balance for a kid of, okay, well, I need to have the seat high enough so that he's getting proper biomechanics to be able to pedal, but I can't put the seat up as high as I would for myself, like how I would set up a bike because he still needs to be able to touch the ground. Obviously, he doesn't have a dropper and he's two. He doesn't, you know... It's not easy for him to understand like, oh, I can just slide forward and step off my bike and I can touch the ground. He panics, takes his feet off the pedals and puts his feet down, right? And so if I put the seat where it should be, he can't touch the ground. So having that little bit of ability to adjust this would bring his knees away from the handlebars and give him a lot more stability pedaling. But as it is, you, you can see he kind of gets like wobbly. So um, that would be something I wish would just be 
automatically done. I'm sure it wouldn't be that hard to find a new seat post and post and put a railed seat on it, but just something I think that would be like a little touch that make it better. The other thing that I'm going to consider for his next bike that again, if the 16 inch edge had it, I would automatically probably just buy that bike is disc brakes. Um, I know there's debate on whether that's better or not. These ones are a little bit cheaper. They're a little bit easier to maintain. So, you know, there's, they're obviously good. And I don't know, does a two year old or a three year old need disc brakes? That could be debated as well. But um, I would like disc brakes for him just because we live in a place that is often wet. You know, it's rainy, it's muddy. We get a lot of different weather here, it's snowy. And so these I've just found like when we're riding, we have to kind of keep everything clean because they get wet so then they don't, they don't bite as well or they get mucky and dirty and so they don't bite as well. And that can happen like a lot on the trail. And so, you know, it's more just like a nuisance than anything. Would the disc brakes make it 100% better? I'm not sure, we haven't tried disc brakes for him yet, but I just think the next bike, I would rather just go with disc brakes and that, that would kind of solve that problem. I think it'll also just give him like a little bit better of a braking sensation as he starts to go down. We've made these so that they can't like lock up, but I just find like they're obviously not going to have as much of like a variance of breakability, right? Like how much bite. So I think we would go with disc, disc brakes. I could be way off base on that. Again, it's just personal preference, but if I was looking at two bikes and everything else was very comparable, it would be a deciding factor for me. So with that being said, those are the only two things that I really would say are not like my, there's the things I picked out that I was like, oh, I wish this was different. Otherwise, it's been a fantastic bike and I'm so glad that our local shop brought um, Mud Sweat and Gears always has them in. It's made transitioning him to biking off of my shotgun easier. He loves it. It's held up well. So definitely would say it's worth the money and I love it. The other two bikes that we we're kind of considering for his 16 inch one, so potentially a Rocky Mountain Edge 16, but again, the Edge doesn't come, the 16 doesn't come with the railed seat and it just has the, the V-brakes as well. So that will kind of factor into our decision. The other bike that we're looking at is the Common Cell Ramon and it does have a high, or sorry, a, a mechanical disc brake and it does have a railed seat. Now the Ramon is probably a couple pounds heavier and has a higher standover height than the Rocky Mountain Edge. So it's going to be kind of like, do we want a lower standover and a little bit cheaper in price, but still an amazing bike and go with the Rocky Mountain Edge? Or do we want to try something new and go with the Common Cell? Neither of us have owned Common Cells. I've actually never had a lot of experience with them, so I, I can't be certain as to the quality, um, it's kind of hard to find videos on them. So probably go check one of those out and then I'll report back and let you know how it is. But we are considering it because for a slight price jump, like I said, you do get those disc brakes, you do get the seat that has the railed seat. So it's definitely up there for a consideration for us. It also is a really cool looking bike. The other one that I would love to get my hands on and try out for him would be the early rider in the Hellion. I believe it's the Hellion. And there's also the Seeker, uh, but they're really hard to come by in Canada. And uh, I know they are quite an expensive bike. From what I've done in my research, it looks like the major draw to that, besides the fact that they're fantastic equipped and built bikes, is that they are quite light. So from kind of what I'm seeing, they're often at least a couple pounds lighter than any of the other bikes. So that can factor in really huge when you're going up hills and stuff like that with kids lots. Not too concerned about that because if we ever get to a lot of hills, we do have the Stasic, so he could jump on that and uh, use the Stasic on those days and then it would be assisted. So I'm not hugely worried about weight. He's also a really big two-year-old, so uh, he's got some strength behind him. So I will keep you posted as I get a chance to look at those and find out more about them. But like I said, kind of looking at those because of the things that they offer that the Rocky Mountain Edge does not. So that being said, if you see a Rocky Mountain Edge and you're thinking about buying it, I wouldn't worry about, you know, quality or the build quality or anything like that. It is an awesome equipped bike. Definitely say two thumbs up on this bike. I love it. 
Um, my son loves it, but we will probably decide in the next couple months between the common salt and the Rocky Mountain, and I'll keep you posted on that. If this has been helpful at all, give it a like and you know share it if you want to. I really appreciate it. Again, thanks to Mud Sweat and Gears for having the rad stuff and, and helping me set up my bike and helping with our kids' bike. Hope you like this. Hope you enjoy it. Have a good one. See you on the flip side.